Yeah, hello, I'm Soren Harner. I'm the VP of Engineering at Big Commerce. Big Commerce is a supplier of uh, online retail stores, and so we've got about 20,000 stores on our platform and growing. And uh, we're looking at implementing continuous deployments, so this was a really interesting day and session for us. Uh, I would say that uh, my overall impression is that it wasn't so much that I learned something new, but it was that it was helping me put together the pieces of what we're already trying to do and how to communicate that better in the organization. And I just spent the last uh, weekend reading Dan, P Dan Pink's book called Drive, where he talks about this kind of motivation 3.0 approach, looking at autonomy and mastery and purpose. And it was really amazing to see every speaker touch on that topic. And so I'm going to go in, uh, go back tomorrow, back to work and really push on that culture side of what we're doing because just so much of what we're doing in terms of process and product is intertwined with culture. Getting the invite from Chris I really wasn't keen to come because I don't don't like days like today. Um, I was pleasant, really pleasantly surprised uh, by the quality of the people. Um, gave me certainly a lot of ideas around what to take back to the business. Um, whether it's at a high level strategy, the role of um, the mission statement, the vision, um, right the way down to how the business interacts with each other. I'm in a really good position where I've got product, I'm re responsible for product as well as delivery. Um, so I guess that buck stops with me, which is a good and a bad thing. Understanding the importance of culture really reinforces it. I spend a lot of time reading, um, great in theory, but unless you put it into practice, it's useless. So really spending more time on the um, culture of the driving the culture of the organisation rather than worrying about reviewing a document that really in the long term doesn't make any difference to me. Um, spend more time on that, the important things. Hi, Nish Mahanti, Software Delivery Manager for, at NYRB. So I came along today uh, wanting to understand more about how to do continuous delivery and how to adopt it into our organisation. And at NYRB we're on a journey at the moment. We are going from being a desktop software company that delivers updates maybe once every six months to a online company that has subscription-based software. And we, when your customers have the opportunity of um, paying you each month or moving on, you need to be see, seen to deliver uh, continuous value. And the, the way we're doing that is through continuous delivery. This thing allows us to get stuff out there at a far faster pace. We're going from three monthly deployments to weekly deployments and we're definitely getting the value. And today, today's talks did two things. It validated that we're doing things the right way and that uh, we've started on that journey. It also gave me a lot of ideas for what to do next. And the biggest thing I took away was the people piece, that the piece around leadership, the stuff from Biati and from Jim Highsmith around uh, how do you treat this as an organizational change. And the, the first thing I do tomorrow is uh, read some more of their work and then work out how do I introduce these ideas into the organization. So um, my name's Dan Pullum, I work for Telstra, I uh, work for actually Telstra Digital. Um, Telstra Digital is a, a brand new business unit in Telstra that's brought together all the online teams from across the company. Um, we're tasked with driving um, online transactions up to 35% and doubling pure online sales, so we basically, um, you know, really got to, you know, up the ante in terms of online self-service for um, for Telstra going forward over the next couple of years. So I run a program to um, improve that self-service experience, a customer experience. I'm passionate about user experience, I'm bringing a lot of uh, UX um, testing to the program and, and that's how I've kind of set it up. Um, I've come to this, this kind of workshop, I've got some ThoughtWorks guys in my program who are helping us to shape Agile in Telstra which has its own challenges. Um, I guess what I enjoyed about today was my wife's a designer and the actual continual design element and how that works with continual uh, delivery or development uh, was a bit of a light bulb moment for me. So I've got um, you know good people on the ground, got good UX external, but I need to pull that together and try to make it work in an agile environment. So that was that was really good for me. But I enjoyed I guess the tone of the day. It was. Uh, quite inspirational, um, a lot of good, you know, a lot of good things, and I was writing good notes about what I'm going to, I guess, do when I get back to work and uh, and how I'm going to implement Agile. But I'm in a waterfall environment; it's quite tough uh, to do this kind of work. So, yeah, look, I've got some good conversations to have tomorrow when uh, when I go back with some of my colleagues, uh, especially on the IT side. So I like uh, 
interfacing between them and um, and you know design and UX and being the being the glue there. So yeah, I think I'll I'll be able to take a lot of, into those kind of conversations tomorrow. My name is Leandro. I'm solution delivery manager at Commonwealth Bank. So we're going through a agile journey in there. So I used to go to those conferences to get some insights. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think the Agile community is moving more towards something uh, apart from just the technical stuff, trying to business, uh, bring the business together and get the motivation. I think that's probably uh, the shift that's happening in that community, just the technical people just understanding what, what's going on. I think that's probably, I think was the phrase that uh, I forgot the speaker, don't waste people's time. I think that was the, the key, key learning for me. I think that definitely relates back to that don't waste people's time so everything I'm gonna do tomorrow probably gonna think about that phrase and trying to minimize waste people's time and my time. So I'm Colin I look after Guidewire um, applications within Suncorp and uh, it's predominantly claims systems so for the insurance side of the business. Well today was uh, particularly good the continuous delivery uh, is something we've been looking at uh, rolling out across our organization and uh, I, my view was this is a brand new thing that's uh, um, a new technology we need to look at and uh, a new way of working. And what I got from today was lots of people are already doing this. So if we're not even looking at it or rolling it out, then we're falling behind. So probably the big learning for me is that uh, I want to go back to my teams and, and um, ask them what's stopping us from, from doing this. Uh, uh, lots of organisations, big, small, um, agile and not agile, are doing things like um, that, that are involved in continuous delivery. And so we really shouldn't have excuses for not rolling this out as well. I'll probably uh, walk the floor with my teams and just uh, ask some hard questions because I, I think um, we look at some of these things and they look complex or they look difficult and so we always find excuses for not doing them. So I'll, I'll ask my team's harder questions around why not. I'm uh, currently the GM for Portals and Online Services at NBN Co. And we've got uh, a group that does all the software development and all the online development for the company. I think this was a fantastic event. It was the first time in a long time that I've been able to go to an event where there was an assumption of agile understanding and knowledge when you walked in the door. There's a lot of sort of beginner Agile 101 discussions around the country and it's nice to go to some place where there's an understanding of basic uh, agile principles and talking about the next steps and where we're going th with things and the level of complexity that we discussed today was really refreshing. The key learning today was one is that there's a great parallel between the path of continuous delivery and um, where we're trying to get to in, in, in complexity with um, the entire organization. So going to, uh, as, as Biarte said, beyond budgeting the finance process, it's really interesting to see the parallels between those two. They're both sort of in-state visions and they do really work well together and it was really nice to see people talking about where we're trying to, where we're trying to get with both those things. Because most organizations aren't really talking about how you change the organization to be agile. They're just talking about where IT fits in and this is really a more holistic view. Well, the good thing is I'm going to sit and talk with Jez because he's coming in to talk with our team and really uh, look at what we're doing with continuous delivery and I'm really hoping he finds some problems with it that we can then make some changes to and really uh, tweak where we're going. So I've got, a, I think, a 9.30 with Jez tomorrow morning and we're going to start to, to work on it. In, in one way, this is about change management in, in, in general and uh, in, if you want change, there has to be a case for change. And I think one mistake we often do is that we jump too quickly into this is the new way, the stuff we will do instead of the old way, to people who haven't really, really understood the problems with, with, the, with, with the old way. So you have, to, you have to, if they haven't understood it, you have to create that case for change. Uh, take the budgeting process. Nobody is happy with the budgeting process. I mean, some struggle that with uh, it's taking too much time and some think it's... Uh, kind of uh, uh, prevents them from grabbing opportunities and, and some think it's, uh, uh, it's not a very good language for, for, for talking about or a yardstick for, for, for performance and, and I agree with all those things but those are only symptoms of a, a bigger, more systemic problem related to traditional management. And I think we need to spend time helping people to understand this problem before we jump into the solutions. And the better job we do of 
helping people to understand the problem, the easier it is to get started. But where you get started, I mean, that depends. Um, I've been in companies where uh, this was something that ignited the CEO. The CEO understood it all and wanted it all from, from, from day one. And that is a fantastic situation, but it will, will, will always be more the exception than the rule. Um, so if you're not in that situation, you have to look for other ways of kind of cracking, making the first cracks in this uh, Berlin uh, wall. And uh, uh, this could start in finance because we are sitting on that budget process. Uh, it could start other places. It could start in IT, in HR. Maybe it should start in HR in most companies. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Um, but there is no... It, it depends. But... There has to be this case for change, and sometimes you have to, not construct it, but you have to help people to, to, to understand it.